Hello everyone, welcome back to Marion's World. I've been making pennies and that's because I want to have a new one for myself. And then I thought it's actually <clears throat> quite a good project to make for a Christmas present because you can make one for anybody, men or women, equally would quite like a denim penny, I think. And so I want to show you how I've made mine. I hope you enjoy it. This is something so simple to make and it's a good sewing thing to make as a present for a man because sometimes it's hard to think of what can you sew to give to your husband or your brother or, or, or any, anybody who might like something and, you want, and you're a sewer. Uh, I made these quite a few years ago, one for me with the frilly bit and then one for my husband and he loved wearing his in, in the shed or when he was doing anything, you know, outside and they're so simple to make and apart from being simple, they cost you virtually nothing. So all you need is a pair of jeans, they don't even have to fit you. I think they're really lovely presents. But I'm going to show you how to do it first on this one and then that one. So on this one, because it's got a stretch waist, I don't have the closure. So I'll be adding waist ties onto this one. And on this one, I'll preserve it. But I'm going to get on and just show you how I cut them apart. So first of all, I just need to cut the legs off. Uh, that just got cut off for something else. So I'd actually cut the legs off and leave yourself about two or three inches underneath the crotch just to give yourself enough chance to make the biggest, longest apron that you can. At the same time, I'll cut the legs off this one too. I find denim so useful for all sorts of things. Okay, this first one, it doesn't have a closure at the front, so I'm going to have to add waist ties on. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut into the front. I think I'll cut at the zip. And I'm going to cut the zip out. And I can tidy up the edge later, but just to get it started. Right down, and then I'm going to carry on and cut right down across that seam and cut down the leg seam so you've just got a nice raw edge of denim going down the leg and now I'll do that on the other side too I'm going to preserve the waistband for the moment so I'm actually going to cut just under the waistband seam right in under there and when I come to the side seam I'm going to just cut across the seam and then go down on I don't want the side seam on my pinny so I'm just going to cut down that leg so now it's just attached at the crotch so now the back side is actually going to be the front of the pinny so this is where you want you want the most length you can get. And all I usually do is I fold the trouser in half, put the crotch out like that. And then you don't want this curvy bit, but you do want as long as it's, you can afford to go into that curve a little bit. And just Cut the most length you can. Open it out. And as you can see, even though I did go into the crotch curve a little, it actually doesn't matter. So now we've got the front of the pinny already. And at the moment I think I I think I can't use that waistband. So I am just going to cut it off. I'm going to cut it off, leaving enough to attach onto whatever else I'm going to do. I'm going to do that on here, but this time I have got the button closure here, so I'm going to preserve this whole waistband. So I'm going to start at the front again, 
but this time I am going to go as I am still going to go as near as I can to the waistband without cutting into it. I'm going to cut around the belt keeps because I don't actually want them, but I do keep them because they're useful, so I'll unpick them. And as soon as you come to the side seam, go down the side seam. So I've cut the side seam open and as you can see I've cut on the front side of the seam because it was easier but actually you don't want this seam on at all and so I'm going to go up and cut the seam off altogether. You just want a raw edge of denim and plus you don't want all the attachments of where the pocket was right the way up to the waistband. And I do that on the other side too. I've released the other part of the waistband and so these ones are now just attached by the crotch too. I'm going to do the same thing entirely, just fold it in half down that middle seam, crotch laid out and then you can't really, I suppose, I'll see what it looks like if I take it right to the crotch and I just curve it out a bit and make both sides even. You do get a little bit of a fiddly bit but I don't think it's ever really bothered me. I can take it back a little bit if I want it. I think I will. Just a little bit. The thing is you don't want the pinny to be too short. So I'll just take that back a little bit more. So now this pinny will actually, this will be the front and if that's the right size for somebody, they can just use that button to close to close it with. So if you're using your own jeans or the jeans of somebody who you know that fits them, then just preserve the whole waistband. You can go back with your scissors and neaten up the cut, but actually it just frays in nicely and never seems to be a bother to me. And all I do otherwise is cut the belt keeps off because I usually keep them. So now I've got that one ready. I usually leave these on if, if I've got them on. I'm ready to put the bib on. So I suppose if you just wanted a waist apron, you just need to neaten up the edges now. But I like the bib on top. The length of the bib needs to be around about... Let's see how big this one is. That one is ten and a half inches altogether, which is... 28 centimetres so with the leg one of the legs you've cut off you just open it up and you can sort of put your pinny on top to see where you'd like it to be so we're not going to need to turn over a top because we've got the hem of the trouser it doesn't matter that that's off centre it doesn't matter to me anyway that's for sure and so what I need is about a 28 centimetre long bib plus what you sew on. So if that's going to be like that, I need enough for it to go twice down. So if I'm going to just fold that over like that and cut the bib off there, you don't I hardly have to measure it. So on this one, I think I'm going to shape the bib a little. I'm going to keep that seam in the middle. Let's just take it into there. And I'm just going to freehand do a curve. going to be the front of my penny. I've cut myself some uh, bias by just cutting two inch strips of this fabric and I've ironed it in half and then opened it up and ironed the middles to the middle leaving a bit of a gap because when I put it in half again I want the back to be sticking out from the front so that when I put it onto my fabric and I stitch right near the edge of the top, I know I'll catch the back one as well. I'm just going to start and sew that all the way up to the top of the bib. 
just making sure it's right on the edge of the denim every time. And then when I get to the top of the bib, I'm just going to carry on and finish right up to the top of here and that'll be this, the strap that you can tie around the back of your neck. I'm not finishing that end off because it may be that it gets cut down. I'll just leave it for the moment and do the same with the other side of the bib. On this side of the bib, you need to start from the end and do the stop half first. The, the wider bit of bias to be on the back and you're sewing it from the front. So really all you have to do is make sure that you have enough there and keep sewing till you nearly get to the bib. Okay, my straps are done, ready to be adjusted right at the end. So now it's time to sew the bib to the apron. And we want wrong sides together. And just centre the centre the waistband and the bib up on this small one. I'm just going to do it by eye because I know that that isn't a centralised seam. I put a couple of pins in just to make sure that's where I want it to be. Like that. And then the main thing now is that I can sew it in the ditch of the waistband so that my machine's not having to do with that bit there. I uh, put my foot down and I'm just going to very carefully go right into that ditch. And it means that your, your stitching line's hardly going to be noticeable. And this is when I now cut that piece back so that it gets hidden inside and I'm going to just put it under the iron and iron that upwards and then when I sew it again I've got no raw edges there which I don't think I need to iron it even but you can iron it and so this time I am going to sew through the waistband but I'm going to try and go right along that stitching line to sew the bib into the proper place. And just take it easily. I'm just on an old machine. I know it'll cope with it. And backspace to do it off. Do you know, I always say backspace. I must have a mental block on it. And now you can see that the apron's coming together. That's really nicely attached onto there. We've got no raw edge on the back. It's just a nice seam, nice looking. So I've got the neckties. Next thing is um, to finish off the edges. So if you did nothing else, you could just turn it over and stitch it with one line of stitching. Depends what you're wanting it for. There's nothing wrong with that. It's not going to fray so much. So even one line of stitching turned over once would be enough to finish that off. I like to put a frill on or uh, just another piece of bias. So if you're doing it for somebody who loves frills, you can do a double fold. That's a double fold frill. And if you're doing it for somebody who doesn't like frills, just finish it off with another length of bias all the way around. From my frill I've cut four inch wide strips which is 10 centimetres and I've cut them across the bias because I'd already cut across the bias to make the neckties and I have a limited amount of this fabric left. So if you don't have enough to cut the bias, just cut it flat. It's not going to matter at all. But I think four inches is quite a good depth because you're going to fold it in half to make the frill double-sided. I can hear my cat. Boom. To get a nice frill, probably about a, a one and a half to twice the length 
of going right the way around your pinny apron. So this is about one and three quarters amount and that, that is what I've got. I'm hoping I'm going to get waist ties out as well but we shall see. So I'm going to start up here. This is a raw edge so I'm going to just turn that inside out and match the edges and I'm just going to stitch along there because that'll make a nice finished edge. So I've now got a finished edge that I'm going to pin onto the right side of the pinny. And because I've got a limited amount, I don't particularly want to measure out the gathers. I don't want to run a gathering thread. I'm just going to go to the other side, cut that edge flat there, knowing that I can turn it over later. I'll pin that to the other side, like that, giving myself enough of a turn. Might not need all this, you see, I just don't know yet. And then I'm going to Measure where the middle is and pin that to the centre seam. So I'll measure that, pin that there. Go. But I'm actually just going to start sewing this on. I think usually you need less gathers than you think for something like this. I'll just get this started. A bit of back stitch. I'll put my little pleat in, sew over it. A little bit of straight, another pleat. They don't have to be very deep. You don't really have to do that many. Taking a little pinch of fabric, folding it up, and stitching over. When I come to the corner, I'm going to do quite a few so that the frill will go around the corner nicely. Put one, two, and put another two in and that'll help me get around the corner with the frill. As I've come to the other end, I've cut the frill down and I've just folded that end in and I'll sew the frill on and then I can just hand hem that. And it means that I haven't wasted any fabric and my frill is on. Now if you were bias binding it, that would be you done because one go round with the bias. But for this, I've got one more, one more piece of sewing to do and that's to turn this out so that the frill sticks out. And all I'm going to do is go back round within about, I'm going to just measure it, do it from the side of my presser foot is on the edge of the denim and I'm just going to make sure it's pulled so that I know I'm catching the back and it'll make the frill stand out nicely. So just one small back round. You could do this with a zigzag or, a, or an embroidery stitch if you have an embroidery machine. But I'm just doing straight stitch because that's what I've got. And it makes a really lovely edge. The only thing I've got left to do now is the waist ties because this didn't have a waistband that went all the way around for me. So I have pieced together the very last pieces of this fabric. And I would have cut it the same width as the frill at four inches. There just wasn't enough. So it's three inches wide and I have got actually three pieces um, sewn together to make one long piece. I'm just going to sew it into a tube and turn it through and then cut that in half to make the waist ties. I'm not going to bother with interfacing or anything. They, they just need to be soft and able to tie around the back of the waist. I've turned the tube and I've pressed it flat and I've pressed it with the seam into the middle so that on the front I don't have a seam. So now I'm just going to cut this whole length in half so I've got equal ties on each side and sew them onto the pinny. Now sometimes you might have an opening at where you've cut the waist and so I think it's quite nice to be able to just put that piece inside sometimes if you've got a narrow enough piece that'll go in you can push it in 
and then just zigzag back and forth and that'll be perfectly fine to keep that waist tie in. Well I've finished both pinnies and for this one I have just turned under the ends of the waist ties and sewn them. I didn't want to put a pocket on the bib but I've just made a little bit of patchwork of all the denim and sewn it on with a bit of zigzag round there. And for the neckties, because you don't know how long anybody wants to wear them, all I've done is finish it off with a knot. And then when whoever's going to get it, gets it exactly the right size for them, if they want to cut it back, they can just cut it back and put another knot in, or they can leave it. But it doesn't need anything else. And I think they're really, it's a really pretty pinny. I think it might sound like a funny present to give to somebody at Christmas or for their birthday, but who wouldn't want a lovely denim pinny that had been handmade for them? This one I finished with a shorter bib because I just fancied it. It's got the same long ties to do, but the fabric I've used for here, I didn't even need to do as much as for that one because it's the hem of a brushed cotton sh um, sheet that I've been using for years to cut up for all sorts of things, but I still had two big long hems. And so all I did was cut the hem with a little bit extra and sewed it on with the extra bit and I've zigzagged that all the way around to keep it in on the back. So that's made a pretty hem on there. I don't really want anything on there, I definitely don't want a pocket. Uh, but for the waist, I didn't even need to do waist ties because this had the button for the front and that'll go around and just tie it, uh, just put the button around your waist at the back. So I think there's not many um, sewing things that you can do equally for men and women but I think this is one of them because I mean it's so pretty and if you want to make one without the frill this one's this one's been a workshop one so it's marked but that's the beauty of it it's hard wearing it can go in a workshop it can be doing whatever you want it to do anyway that's them two pennies done one for me one for someone else and if you've got the jeans in your stash or you've got them in your cupboard and you haven't been wearing them this is a good way of using them and your bit of material for your frill or your bias binding it's still that's a cheap present to make for somebody well i hope you enjoyed that everyone i do love making things for christmas and mostly it doesn't cost very much these pinnies, if you've already got the jeans, it'll cost you nothing at all but your time. And if you have to go out and thrift a pair, well, you know, it's whatever you want to pay for, whatever you get. But I find that you can get them for not very much money at all. And they come out really pretty. I thought I'd just show you what else I'm on with at the moment. So I've just finished this. I'm doing a lot of hand stitching and when I say hand stitching I'm differentiating between what I'm doing for the bird book which is embroidery hand stitching. I've been stitching clothes so I've just finished this top which is in jersey and I found out about Alabama Channon a few years ago and I've carried on making clothes in that style. Not exactly her style but hand sewing the jersey and so this t-shirt I've just colour blocked because I didn't have enough of this to do the full thing so I've put extra in from something else that I'd used and I've just done some seed stitching really around the neckline and down the sides and I really like the visible the visible running stitch where it's all been put together and inside it's all been all the seams are hand worked so I really like that. So that's finished. I haven't actually worn it out yet, but it's there ready to do. The exciting thing is I'm actually stitching the linen coat. So I am filming bits and pieces of it and you probably will be seeing something. But I just thought I'd show you how far I'm on with it. So this is the back of the coat. So I've got the gauze in the skirt. Actually, is this the, this is the front. And I am in the midst of putting a French seam to sew the bodice onto the skirt part. And so this is all hand stitched as well. So 
So there's my, that's the outside. That's my seams from the outside. And there's the inside. Hardly any difference. That's because they are flat felled and I've hemmed them. And I will be doing a little hand stitching tutorial to go with this because I think hand stitching clothes it sounds like it's tedious if you've already got a machine but actually it doesn't take that long and although nobody else is really going to know when you're wearing something whether you've put made it on the machine or even if you've made it yourself but actually you feel proud wearing something that you've put that time into and it feels like I'm respecting this lovely um, cloth by stitching it by hand and I've got another exciting thing to tell you. I'm actually going to one of the big knitting and stitching shows that happen in uh, Britain. And it's at Harrogate, which is only about an hour and a half's journey for me. And I do go almost every year anyway. And uh, it's just like a real fabulous place where all the, all the people come together who have wool and yarns and paper crafts and fabric, beads, buttons, you name it, it's there. I'm going on Friday and I actually emailed them and said, would it be all right if I did a little bit of film for my channel? Because I think my um, friends on YouTube would really like to see all that. And they sent me a free ticket. So that's really lovely. So the ticket I'd already bought, I've come to my sister, so she's going to come with me, and I'm taking a friend too. So it's a bit daunting to think that I'm going to be filming some of it for you, but I've got now got a little press pass to go in with, and I'll film what I can, and I'll hope to edit it together to make a really nice little video that'll maybe come over the weekend or maybe not it might depend how much i've got to do whether it comes straight away but i'm actually going there on friday so i'm really looking forward to that um in the meantime i'll just say happy crafting and happy stitching or paper crafting or whatever you're doing i hope you're really enjoying it and it's helping you to relax or be inspired or whatever else it is and just if you if you're liking what I do, please like and subscribe to my channel. And in the meantime, I just say bye from Marion's World, and wish me good luck for the knitting and stitching show. And hope that people don't mind me doing little bits of filming. And I hope I can do something nice for you. Bye everyone. See you next time.